Hey guys, welcome back to the second time Lucky Mining channel. In today's quick video, we are going to have a look at the Flux roadmap for 2023. Now, if you like the Flux content, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a great deal. But enough of shilling my channel, let's jump into the content. Now, in this video, I'm going to go over the 2023 roadmap of the Flux team or what the Flux team put out. And again, if you haven't watched that full video of their AMA or State of the Union, I'll leave a link in the video description and tag it at the top. But I'd really like you to encourage you to go and have a look at that and you'll hear all of the information out of the horse's mouth. Now, the question is, why the hell am I doing it? Well, I think I have a perspective from an outsider. You know, I'm not part of the Flux team. And, you know, I'm, I have been a miner of Flux, and you've probably seen some of my videos on that. I am a node operator in the Flux ecosystem, and again, I've got a couple of videos on that. And then I've actually deployed an application on the Flux network, right? So I'm a real user, a miner, and a node operator on the Flux network, and also an outsider. So I thought this would, video would help at least with my perspective of an outsider on the 2023 roadmap of Flux. Now, to get the disclaimers out of the way, this video is not at all sponsored in any way, shape or form. However, I have accumulated a fair bit of Flux in my portfolio throughout my mining activities and my node operator activities. So it's important for you to know as my opinion might come across biased because I am very bullish on the Flux project. So just take that into account as we go through the roadmap. Now, jumping into quarter one, the first thing on the list is the Fractus node. So um, this has been in development and it's actually live on uh, the production environment. So there is a couple of nodes or Fractus nodes running on it. And for the guys that doesn't know what it is, it's basically a storage node that sits within the Cumulus structure. So there might be more in Nimbus and Titan in the future, or at least that's my speculation. But um, the reward structure for those would be announced hopefully in Q1. Now, the other thing within Q1 um, that I'm excited for is Jetpack 3.0. So if you're unfamiliar, um, hopefully I'll put a screenshot on the screen, but Jetpack 2.0 is basically uh, allowing you an easier platform to launch your application on the Flux network. So with Jetpack 3.0, I would imagine there will be a lot of new features stacked onto that. Um, you will even see some of the further roadmaps talks about marketplace and a whole host of other things, but Jetpack 3.0 would be a uh, improvement on Jetpack 2.0 and making it a lot easier and prettier and more user friendly. And that's the main focus here to deploy your app on the Flux network. Now, the next thing that I'm super excited for in Q1 is actually WordPress. Now, a lot of the world's websites run on WordPress and getting WordPress to be able to be run seamlessly and easy on the Flux network will do massive things to bring over adoption or move over websites to be hosted on Flux. So that will drive the usage of Flux that will put all of these nodes that's on the network. And if you haven't seen the other slide, and um, I'll put the, the slide up, but there's actually 15,000 nodes on the network and the Flux team has all these resources available to them where people like me um, and potentially you uh, putting their hardware to work and actually getting business or at least getting applications to be hosted is a great thing at least from my perspective on the Flux network. So I'm super excited for WordPress. Next thing on the list is Flux OS on mobile. I'm not a big mobile user, so I'm less interested um, in that. But for all of the mobile guys, um, the Flux OS uh, application on mobile is going to be improved. Now, the other thing that I think a lot of people are waiting for is the snapshot that was done last year. The distribution of parallel asset number eight, which is going to be Algorand, will happen also in Q1. Uh, some of the other notable things here is the payment for hosting your Flux app in Fiat. So that's a big thing. Um, at least for me, you know, it didn't bother me too much as um, you know, I'm a miner of Flux. My nodes are getting Flux. So hosting my app on Flux wasn't a big problem. I could get Flux. I had Flux in my wallet. Um, there's a lot of people that also donated. And again, thanks to everybody that donated for the development of the site. Um, so paying in Flux wasn't an issue for me, but it is and it will be a big thing for adoption for 
normal people to host either their applications on the Flux network. So it's a big step in the right direction to simplify hosting your apps on Flux. So it's a big thing and I think it's an important thing. Um, some of the other things um, you know, in Q1 is the documentation update. So again, as a developer, well, not that I'm a, a great developer, but as somebody that is deploying and using some of the documentation on the Flux network, it's will be great for me to see that these documentation gets updated specifically on the API side uh, as that's the stuff that I use the most. Now, the next thing that I'm super excited for is XDAO 2.0. So I'm not sure if you guys have used the XDAO before, but uh, you know it's not the most user friendly. On top of that, the stuff that comes through there seems a little bit odd, or at least that's my opinion. So having an improvement on XDAO 2.0 is going to be a great thing. The other thing that I find super interesting and very bullish on is who gets to vote on XDAO. So in the past, it's been the node operator. So people like me, and again, I have voted before, but now uh, the idea is that the broader Flux network is going to vote. So that would include miners. Now, the last couple of items in Q1 sort of talks to dynamic pricing. And at least as far as I understand, the model or the amount of money that you pay today for resources gets updated, I think once a month, I'm not exactly sure, but it's fairly static. And I suspect the dynamic pricing model is to keep whatever the price of flux is and the dollar amount uh, to keep those sort of aligned. And again, that's more of a budgeting thing for people deploying bigger applications or deploying applications on the Flux network. They wanna make sure that the dollar amount for the resources is the same, depending on what the Flux amount is or how it's gonna fluctuate that they don't care about. So that's the, the main thing there. Um, you know, the second last thing here is a referral program. And you know, <laughs> What's a cryptocurrency without a referral program, right? So no, so uh, you know, I, I would imagine if you get people to host applications on the Flux network, uh, there will be a little bit of a, a referral or a kickback for, for that matter. So I think that's a, a good idea. It's sort of incentive to get people to get some friends or businesses to host their application on the Flux network. Now, the last thing, they didn't really share um, too much information besides the, the football analogy, but I'm not that exactly sure what sits in the prime time example. Now, looking at Q2, the first item here is Hackathon, and I'm excited for Hackathon. I've been part of a Hackathon in the past, but I'm excited to see what is going to be the topic of the Hackathon and to see what the output is. So generally out of Hackathon, um, you know, there's generally application or something that comes out of that, and sometimes that frizzles into nothing, but most of the time, it's actually something amazing. So I'd like to see what comes out or what's the topic, and then, uh, you know, what is the output of the hackathon. The other thing that I'm excited for, but at least at this stage I'm not planning to go, is the Flux conference. So again, it would be nice for all of the Discord and Flux community to see each other face to face, shake some hands, make some friends, real friends or in real life. Uh, so that would be great for the Flux community. The next thing is Parallel Asset number nine, which was the snapshot was last year to be distributed. So I'm not exactly sure which parallel asset it's going to be, but it should at least be interesting and nice to get some more flux in your bag. Now, the other thing that I'm excited from a technology perspective is the decentralized databases. So if you're unfamiliar, what has happened in the past is if you've got an application that has a database, when you launch the application, you get three instances. That de database amongst your application wasn't shared. And if there's updates on node one on your database, that is not being shared or none of that information exists on uh, the other node that it's on. So that becomes a bit of an issue with game servers and stuff like that, where potentially it despawns, then it despawns a new uh, database with nothing in, right? So uh, that's a bit of an issue with applications and having a synchronized DB, and I would imagine it will have some sort of a master-slave relationship. That will be great for some of these applications that needs to make use of data that is shared. Now, the thing that I don't know is, you know, what this would mean from a bandwidth perspective. Uh, I would imagine that 
bandwidth requirements is actually going to get used as data gets synchronized uh, amongst nodes themselves, specifically database information. Now, the other things in Q2 is the carbon footprint. Now, Flux, it's important to know their carbon footprint and try and keep it as low as possible. Um, the, some of the other things is unified branding, so which I think would be nice. Um, at least if you look at the websites, if you take run on Flux home, uh, run on Flux .io and let's say Jetpack, all of those three different websites looks completely different. So it's important uh, that the branding and websites and stuff like that start looking exactly the same so that they send the same message. So again, that would be good from a image or marketing perspective on the Flux network. Now, the other thing or the last thing in Q2 is a Titan nodes on Nimbus. Now, if you're unfamiliar, uh, Titan nodes is really shared nodes where, uh, you know, if you don't have enough Flux or it doesn't really matter if you don't have enough Flux, you might even have enough Flux for your own node. Uh, but for people that do doesn't want to deal with the hassle for running their own node, which I totally get, it can be complicated dealing with UPnP and all of the stuff that comes or goes wrong with a Flux node. But again, the Titan nodes, which is shared nodes today, is only operated in the Stratus um, tier of nodes. And what this last update here is, is start allowing a little bit of Titan nodes uh, within the Nimbus structure. So again, that's just running a couple of Nimbus nodes for people that are putting their flux into Titan. Again, uh, at least from my perspective, I think it's to do with saturation. So I just want to make sure that the Stratus people aren't getting upset with more and more and more and more nodes getting put on into their tier, making their rewards a little bit longer. And again, that's not a big deal. We're not talking massive amounts of servers here, so you wouldn't really feel the impact. However, it would make it a lot easier for people to stake their flux and not putting it on exchanges. Again, I'm still a big fan of running your own node, but again, this is an option that is available and that will be, again, more spots specifically for Titan, which is a good thing. Now, looking at Q3. Now, what I found interesting here is the private dockers. So that is a, a great thing here. And I'm not sure if you've seen it in the past, but for you to actually host your application on the Flux network, it needs to be dockerized today. Um, and that Docker image, anybody can go and pull that Docker image. So anybody that wants to have some sort of a private application that they don't want people to pull and run by themselves. And again, that is something that you can do today, right? So you can take my app that I host on the Flux network. You can just pull my Docker image and run it yourself, which again, you know, some people have done, which is a good thing, right? Um, I'm not against that. My application is open for anybody to use. Um, it's designed to be useful. So I'm open to that. But, you know, some people might have sensitive information or want to keep their application private and having private dockers is a step in the right direction. So totally happy with that new feature. Now, the next thing is making improvements to the Flux marketplace, which I'm super excited for. Uh, again, all of these steps that can get uh, Flux easier to use from an application perspective is a great thing. Again, that drives adoption and it gets people to host applications on the Flux network. And, you know, to be honest, I don't know about you, but definitely me, as soon as something becomes a struggle to use, you just ignore it and move to something that's a little bit easier. So the more easier it can be to host an application on the Flux network, the more people is going to come and going to stay on the Flux network. So again, expanding and making the Flux marketplace a lot easier, I'm super happy for. Now, the next one here is more technical. And again, I'm excited for it, but maybe not for everybody, but some changes to the Flux Domain Manager of the or the AFDM. Now, for me, that is a little bit of a black box. I know the code is on GitHub and I can stand up my own Flux Domain Manager, but technically, how does that work in the back end and making sure that the closest server is hosted to somebody for my application, that I does, don't know. So hopefully, together with the documentation updates that I alluded to earlier and this change, we could potentially get more information at least on the technical side, again, not for everybody, um, of how applications will be served 
and how they will be refreshed, when are they getting pulled, um, all of that type of information is sort of what I'm missing in any of the documentation. But again, uh, improving on the Flux Domain Manager is a good thing. Now, the next thing and probably what people are excited about <laughs> is the snapshot so there's going to be another snapshot in q3 so make sure that you accumulate as much flux just before the snapshot and hold it within your zelcore wallet again important needs to be in your zelcore wallet at the time of the snapshot now the last thing that in q3 that i'm super excited for is the proof of useful work. There's a lot of questions in Discord, there's a lot of buzz on proof of useful work. So like everybody else, I'm super excited. I wanna find out what the PCIe lane configuration is going to be, and then how do I set up my machine to be part of proof of useful work? Especially in a bear market where people are looking for all sorts of things to profit, at least from a mining perspective, you know, this is another avenue to have a look and see what it is now besides you know looking at it from a miners perspective actual use case for proof of useful work is going to be massive and again that drives the adoption that i alluded to a little bit earlier um, you know that's the main thing the more people that we can get using the actual flux network the better that will be for the flux project and hopefully price at the end of the day but it's important to find useful things to do with Flux as that will drive adoption. And the big thing here, adoption, adoption, adoption. So again, I'm super excited to take part of the proof of useful work. I hope I can take part of that, um, but super excited for Q3. Now, looking at Q4, the first item here is the Flux University. Now, I'm not exactly sure what will be taught necessarily there, but driving education is always a good thing. And getting people involved in applications or building applications or how to dockerize your application uh, or how to mine or how to set up your node, uh, those would be great education stuff that I think would help um, any people or getting more people involved on the Flux network. Now, the other thing here is another snapshot. Now, listening to the AMA, that didn't sound like a normal snapshot for parallel assets that we are used to. So I'm quite interested to see exactly how that pans out. Now, the last two items is another hackathon. Again, excited to find out what the topic is and generally the output and potentially if I can participate in the hackathon. The last thing is the Cirrus nodes and that would be typically like off-chain or the smaller type of nodes for testing. So I'm excited to see exactly what it is. For me, it's a bit of a, a gray area. I've heard of it a lot of times, but I don't know exactly how that is going to function and how that will integrate into the other nodes in the system and sort of what would be the system requirements and is it only going to be for schools or smaller applications to test stuff. So again, I'm excited to, to have a look at that information. Now, that's it for the 2023 Flux Roadmap. If you haven't noticed, I am super excited for the Flux team for 2023. I'm excited to be part of it, either hosting a node or mining or updating my application for the guys. I'm excited to be part of it. I'm hoping that 2023 is going to be a good year for the Flux team, or I know it's going to be a good team. Um, but that's enough for this video, guys. If you've liked the video, please like it and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify in the comments what you would like me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.